Welcome to stream my Mario Maker video game piano. So again, with the Super Mario Bros. main theme. chat so you get to make a few requests type in chat your free request now I'll play the opening theme to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time <laughs> Yes, MC. I kept my hair myself. How's it going? You can make a free request since Arlana doesn't seem to be responding. So type in chat your request. And now I'll play Bomb Bomb Battlefield from Super Mario 64. <laughs> Thank you. 
Silva. Yes, I play Ordon Village from Zelda. Welcome, Alana. Hope you're feeling better. Hope you're feeling better. And welcome back, ET Sunja01. And Strad Music Disc. From Minecraft. Let me see and find the sheet music to that. Here's Strad from Minecraft. Hope everybody's doing well.
and welcome back La Science de la Musique. Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Hello, Valley Suleiman. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying that Mario mashup. Mario is always fun music to play. You gave up on piano a few months ago after, and after listening and seeing you play, I decided to try again and practice even more. Yes, Arlana, a lot of people give up because it's piano playing is difficult. The pros make it look easy, but there's a lot of practice that goes in, in the background. And practicing consistently is key. You have to train the brain and the hands also because piano is not just moving hands quickly, it's also the brain the communication between the brain and the hands. The brain communicates to the hands, the hands communicate to the brain. So you have to understand what you're playing. Like reading sheet music helps, understanding what chords you're playing, understanding the structure, the emotions, the musical terms, etc., etc. Welcome, Funky Monkey. Welcome back. How's it going? Hi, Brugvaza. Welcome. Hi, Link 101. And uh, hello, 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 hello. Uh, yeah, arigato, konnichiwa. Uh, hello, Jonathan Lovely, how's it going? <laughs> Star Trek emoji. <laughs> Let's see what Star Trek. I should know some Star Trek music. I was actually practicing some Star Trek music recently. Trek from the Paramount Television series Star Trek. Valley Suleiman, yes, it's Star Trek music. The rhythms in the melody of Star Trek is really unique. It's, I mean, it's really, it's unexpected, the rhythms of Star Trek music. It's refreshing because uh, a lot of music, like pop music, they follow like this formula or this kind of standardized rhythmic template. But here, this Star Trek music is is there's a lot of rhythmic uh, variations. Hello, Beast B Boy two twelve. Welcome. Next up is Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence by Richie Sakimoto. Thank you. 
and welcome Mike Fresh Beats. Hello, DB Baller. I see you, Jonathan Lovely. Live long and prosper. Originated from the Jewish priestly blessing, probably an improvisation from the Jewish actor Lee Leonard Nimoy. I see. Live long and prosper, prosper indeed. Hello, Beast Boy 212. <clears throat> Arlana writes, my last PM teacher said I was wrong for learning that way. She didn't like it and made me stop, but when I started playing piano again, I still do it. Is it normal to play by ear because I have a habit of doing it instead of reading notes? Yeah, so some piano teachers will be very strict because, well, they these piano teachers, they taught a lot of students so they know what students do well and what students don't do well, they see a pattern of behavior. And I think some teachers, they set the standard because they see if students don't meet that standard, they're going to go off in a, in a different trail, in a different path. So that's what I noticed as I'm getting older and teaching more and more students. Yes, uh, I think your teacher, your teacher is right in, in making, having a standard for that. Now, there's gonna be some pushback because reading sheet music is difficult at first, but there's, websites and apps to help you read sheet music like musictheory.net. Uh, see, reading sheet music is using the brain and that's what you want to do. You want to use the brain and as well as the hands to play piano. So, uh, yes, uh, your, your teacher, your former teacher, I don't know, your former teacher, your current teacher, that teacher has, has set standards and that's a standard for, for it's, it's not an un, unreasonable standard either to read, to have to learn to read sheet music. It's, it's really important to read sheet music, in my opinion, uh, because that's part of the way of training the hands and the brain. That being said, there have been some pianists that learn by ear and, and play really proficiently, but that's more like the exception to the rule. It's more about uh, reading sheet music is important, uh, in my opinion. That's right, stop spamming. So, yeah, some teachers, if they come from a certain school or a certain country, uh, they're brought up a certain way, they, they will they'll pass that along because the way teachers teach is kind of reflective of how they were taught. So, if you want to, yeah, if your teacher insists on reading sheet music, that teacher is correct, in my opinion, because depending on what your goals are, uh, if you want to read, like, pl play classical music, read pop music, whatever, a lot of the music is in sheet music format. So if you learn to read sheet music, then you, you can read like millions and millions of pieces. But if you have to learn by ear, then it's going to take much longer because you have to uh, you have to read things by ear. That takes much. That takes a lot more time. And thank you, OMG, it's a bear. Spaceland from Mario Party 2 in tribute to the newly announced Mario Party game that has a remastered Spaceland and music. Let's see if I have a sheet music to that. Spaceland. Da, 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 da. Here's Spaceland from Mario Party 2.
realized her name was Miss Boyd. She was really strict. No wonder. Hmm, I wonder why. I understand now. Thank you, Martin. You're right. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, because, uh, you know, professional pianists, they can convert these abstract symbols on a page to emotion that really moves the audience. It's really amazing. Like at that level, it's it's quite amazing. It's it's like a miracle. It's like a magic trick done on the piano. Like, like the level of professional pianists, once they learn the music, they're not even thinking about the... They're not thinking where their hands or fingers are going at that level, the professional level. They they know the music so well, like all the markings on the music. And like some some teachers ask their students to write out the music by memory, like all everything, if they if they really know the music. So uh, like the professional levels, they can they can on a dime change the color of or emotion of a single note. And I think that's only possible if they learn from sheet music because the way they can, the, the level of command and control that professional pianists have, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like, they, and they, they know how to convey this emotion to the audience. Uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Like if you attend live performances of classical pianists, uh, then you can, you can see what it is. If you watch YouTube videos and listen to recordings, it's, sort of there not really like like that that emotion that that if it's it's it doesn't like when you listen to performance on youtube yes you can kind of get a sense of the performance but it's completely different in real life like i've been to classical music concerts where i'm just amazed and like i i i'm like some performances are are really moving like it's, it's amazing like like the amount of like the like what the, the the charisma and and the the atmosphere of the whole the whole performance hall like changes as they walk on stage and what they perform it's really hard to convey that in words uh, especially in the recordings you, you don't it's, it doesn't capture that even if they have like hd cameras and multi cameras it, it doesn't capture a live performance feel and so it you can really sense the, the performance energy and and the the subtlety of the emotions and when you actually go to a live performance so that comes from that's part of it's coming from reading the sheet music because I think if somebody learns by ear there's uh, are, they're already copying what they're listening to so they don't have a chance to come up with their own interpretation because they're just copying what they're hearing but the sheet music is actually from the composer because the composer had to have written out the sheet music and then as a performer it's actually not and seeing the classical music world, it's not like a pop star. Like the performers, it's literally a medium that that is the bridge between the composer and the audience. The compo the the performer ideally should be like non-existent because the performer is simply communicating what the composer wants to the audience. Now these days we have like people, you know, like pop stars dressing up in wild costumes, you know, stage lights, and you know these flashing lights and etc etc and you know all this hype but you know like Sviatoslav Richter later in his life he simply wanted the light not on himself just on the sheet music and the piano he didn't want any stage light on him and we see other performers like Glenn Gould who you know who, who didn't want to perform after a certain age he wanted to record instead and we see Frederick Chopin who only gave about 20 performances in his life. He didn't like live, he didn't like performing live. And so we see a lot of these performers that they, uh, you know, they, they re retire, so to speak, from performing live. Like Franz Liszt, for example, in his mid thirties, he retired to devote more time to composing. Well, by then he had all the, he had riches from the Kings and the royalty. He received like Mozart's piano, uh, for example, as a gift and, and many, many other riches he could retired in his mid thirties. But, uh, the idea is that, you know, the, the level of the, at the high level of pianists, uh, like that's the level, uh, that, that, the power that performers have when they perform. I, I think a lot of some students, they may not be aware of this when they start piano, but, uh, that's, that's kind of like the, one of the peaks of the mountain. So, well, your teacher is being strict because your, your, maybe your teacher sees this in, um, 
first of all, your teacher uh, maybe has, has taught a lot of students and your teacher knows what it takes to be good. Like, for example, a lot of great pianist pieces are coming from uh, like China, Korea, Russia, Japan. Uh, so these teachers, they have a lot of experience seeing what it takes to nurture uh, a student from a very young age to around 18 years old. They know the steps it takes. And so it's no longer like a science experiment. Oh, what should I teach them? They've seen this pattern already. They've seen what it takes. And, and there are students who will be like, okay, um, I'm willing to do the work. Just tell me what I need to do. And so there are those students who are willing to put in the time. They're willing to put in the effort. They're willing to, uh, you know, just practice a lot. And so it's those those students that are willing to put in the work and they have really great teachers and they have really good supportive environments that will flourish. So when it comes to students who are like, oh, uh, it's too hard for me to learn sheet music. It's too hard for me to put in like X amount of hours of practice a day. You know, it's too hard to blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the students that are, are going to excel are the ones that are going to put in the work. And having good teaching is a gift in itself because there aren't, many there there are piano teachers but not all piano teachers teach well you know just because you have a piano teacher doesn't mean that they're good there's a huge range of quality of teaching and piano teaching so the so you know there are like 20 million pianists in china uh i'm not sure if that's a very verifiable statistic or fact or not but i read somewhere on the internet <laughs> About that but it, it's not it's not unbelievable there are many many pianists in the world and the pianists that are willing to put in the work they're the ones that are going to uh, they're, they are going to progress the most and it's not even just progressing it's also the rate of progression too because it's the the I see like you know it's it's going in many many aspects not just in piano but sports and even chess people are getting better at a younger age. So like the, the youngest trust grandmaster is like 12 years old. Uh, same for piano, I'm sure like for violin, any, many other instruments, people are getting better at a younger age, pa partially due to YouTube. There's uh, a lot of videos people see uh, other people playing and, and et cetera. So there's, uh, uh, there's more uh, videos, more audio recordings for people to listen to and and so forth and so that's also important too like listening to really really good performances on a consistent basis to get idea of the tone color and the way the sounds are layered and the interpretation and the focus and the drive and the determination and all that that goes into creating a great performance that's an important part of listening to great performances so you don't want to listen to mediocre pianists if you want to get better at piano you need to listen to the top 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 pianists consistently hello buster x25 thank you hello matt da pringle welcome hi pens xl thank you yes i'll be playing more video game music for sure hello andre nicholas silva is it trying to is trying to learn at age 41 a lost cause well it's, I believe it's never too late to learn. The difficulty for adults learning is that they have more expectations on themselves to get better. Sometimes they're impatient. Sometimes they have a lot of other life responsi responsibilities to do. Like if they have children, they have to do a lot of chores. They have work, you know, the social life, relationships, etc., etc. Children are able to succeed, uh, progress because they have, you know, they they have their parents or guardians feeding them, doing the laundry, you know, paying bills, <laughs> I mean, uh, cooking. They, uh, they're, 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 you know, the, the parents are able to do everything for the children. The children just need to sit down the piano and play. You know, that's, you know, that's really what they, they do. I mean, some child are, they're, they're, they're homeschooled too, so they can spend a lot of time. Hello, Laura Bowles, welcome back. I started taking lessons with Miss Boyd at 15 and she even told me if I was new than that, I would have gotten better at it. Listen to you, it's amazing. Thank you, Arlana. 
Yeah, so children start like at age four, or age three, or age two for lessons. It's the training at the young age instills, it becomes, there's a greater chance of piano becoming more intuitive when starting at a young age. So it's, it makes sense. So starting younger, uh, it's, it's can only help, I believe. Plus you have good teaching too. Hello, Zachy Chan, how's it going? All right, no haters here. All right, okay, here we go. Uh, Naruto songs, yes. Here is Sadness and Sorrow from Naruto. Thank you. Hi, Beatrice Vittorino. I used to play the piano, but last five years I lost the passion for the thing. Could you please give me some advice about how could I get back to studying? How could it be better? 
Well, it does take practice to play the piano. That's, you know, you have to practice. And the thing is for piano playing, there's really no way, there's no direction to get better. There's no like, you have to do A, B, C, D, E. And I mean, yes, there are things, there are things you can do to get better to the right direction, but there's no magic pill or secret to getting better piano. It does take practice, it does take hard work. So for example, like they say doctors, they practice medicine, right? It's not doctors are, they know how to fix every, that they know the cure for every illness. Doctors practice medicine. Practice meaning that they, it's kind of like experiments. It's an art form. Just because somebody has uh, illness, sometimes the the cure is not so readily uh, solved. It's not so known. The cure is not is not so obvious. So it's practice in a way that it's not obvious how to get better. So sometimes when you're practicing you're not going to know exactly what you need to work on. That's where the teacher comes in because the teacher will point out things that the performer, the student is not aware of. That's one of the things for pianos is awareness because a lot of performers are not aware of some things they do, like bad habits, for example. Some pianists, they have a tendency to move a lot and they're not aware of it. So the teacher will bring that awareness to the student's attention. Sometimes the student has harsh tone when they play loudly and then the the student is not aware of that and the teacher will bring that to the student's awareness. So that's part of what the teacher can do. Now, recordings can do that as well. If you listen to your own recordings and listen back, that can also provide some insight too. But you don't want to do that too often because then you can become too self-conscious about what you're doing. So you, I recommend recording yourself when you feel, uh, not every day, but, but when you feel that you've made some progress so that's uh, practicing is really important and to have practice you need to schedule in your practice time you need to guard that practice time so like if a friend asks you oh let's go see this movie or let's go eat at this restaurant you have to guard your practice time because that's that's the time you schedule to practice it's really important for that too because uh, that's going to help you practice consistently too because Practicing consistently is really important for playing the piano. There are professionals that say they have to practice at least one hour a day to keep up their level of technique. I find that if I don't practice for a day, it takes me more than one day to recover my level of technique, maybe about a week or so, if I miss one day of practice. Next up is Song the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone. How's it going? Hi, Sofian. Now here's Luma from Super Mario Galaxy. Thank 
And here's Toad's House from Super Mario Brothers 3. Son of man, how's it going? And here's Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 64. to go so thank you all for watching please subscribe and click the bell icon so notified when I go live and please like and comment on the video so the video gets promoted and etc 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 thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next stream coming soon bye bye